port placement is the vital part in making a successful laparoscopic surgery as we all know in the 90s a huge studies by Kushiri, Hanna and Berker who are all the pioneers of ergonomics made it possible for us to understand the port placement and other ergonomics of laparoscopic surgery to help us to optimize it better. Putting all those data into perspective, we always should have a practical approach to it than not by just going with the studies and angles and uh, lengths how to do it there's a simple ways of doing it and here i'm going to explain to you about it when you talk about port placements it's being the most important aspect which forms the brain of a surgery which is an ever evolving field due to various instrumentations but there are certain principles that needs to be followed but by practice we might not be able to follow all the principles so we have to balance between the principles and the practice about how to practically apply them the whole lecture is about how to practically apply to get a port placement then it has to be target dependent and not on procedure dependent patient consideration is very very important especially in obese individual like we're talking about bariatrics where the patient is very obese there has to be a different port placement than what has been taught so that has to be taken into consideration of course past surgical history there's so much of scars in the abdomen we cannot go through the scars due to a lot of additions fibrosis and what about complex procedures for example if we are doing a sleep gastrectomy along with a cholecystectomy sleep gastrectomy along with an appendicectomy sleep gastrectomy along with myomectomy what how we are going to put a port placement so it has to be optimized so that you reduce the ports as well as make sure you can do both the procedures optimally while well, putting all those things into perspective we have to talk initially about what is called as triangulation Mori has beautifully explained in his study in 1985 that triangulation is the most important part of laparoscopic surgery which replicates a naked eye open surgery we always are taught that the camera forms eye of the surgeon so eye has to be always in the center with our motor functions coming from the sides like what we do in a normal day-to-day -day activities so triangulation is important it's a line joining the optical and the operating ports but the optimal performance is achieved when this triangle is a right angle triangle at the optical port that means a 90 degree angulation at the optical port going towards both the dominant as well as the non-dominant hand operating ports which gives the best task for any procedure if it goes more wider you have more fatigue because your elbow and your shoulders are wide apart causing more strain in the muscles of the arms if the angle is so narrow there is a high chance of errors because a smallest of movement will have a large impact and the terminal target area causing a lot of strain and stress on the operating part first plane is a target to endoscopic distance the distance between the tip of the telescope and the target has to be varying depending upon the steps of a procedure it has to be between 75 millimeter and 125 millimeter if at all you want to do a suturing where you have to go so close or a dissection between a vessel and fat you have to be very close which has to be around 75 millimeters you need a panoramic view where we have to have a whole perspective or to overcome the depth perception maybe you have to go out and in so in a panoramic view about 125 millimeters beyond which it might be a more of a zoomed out way where we might not be able to achieve the vision what we wanted to when we talk about the next plane we call this as an optical axis to target view plane at what angle the target should be seen from the scope it should be a perpendicular angle between the target and the telescope 
is very very important if we go more and more parallel you have a lot of parallax errors you have to be as perpendicular as possible to the target so the port placement has to be different on these lines then we call what is as an azimuth angle azimuth angle when you talk about port of telescope as well as ports of instruments the axis between the instrument and the telescope is called as an azimuth angle so it could be 30 degree maximum to get the best performance when you talk about the best optimal performance that should be equal azimuth angle between the dominant hand as well as the non-dominant hand and this can be beautifully demonstrated in the picture what you see on the right which is the best task what a human being performs in normal life that eating so when we see and perform an act of eating using our fork and knife the best way to hold the fork and knife place them on the table or to pick it up and help ourselves perform procedure is when the azimuth angle is at 30 degree so replicate the same in laparoscopy you will have the best performance then what is called as a manipulation angle what is a manipulation angle it's simple it's double the size of an azimuth angle that is the axis between both instruments when you talk about an azimuth angle of 30 on the dominant side azimuth angle of 30 on the non-dominant side and manipulation angle of 60 has to be achieved when put both the azimuth angle together why this is very important okay sometimes we might not be able to get the azimuth angle of 30 on one side so that can be manipulated with the 40 on other side but at the end the instrument should meet at 60 degree manipulation angle to get the best performance if the angle goes more than 60 you develop fatigue which very very bad if angle goes very narrow less than 60 up to 45 and below then your performance will be errors are much more elevation angle is again very very important which is least understood for most of the Norway surgeons what is it it's the angle at which the instrument is focused above the abdominal plane it has to be around 40 to 60 degree and not beyond that the higher it goes up it increases the manipulation and lower it goes it reduces the manipulation what happens is by this way you will be able to achieve the best task with the least strength necessary and the fatigue of a procedure this can be beautifully explained to the right picture when we're eating when we go to a restaurant we always see it's more difficult when the table is too high where we have to lift our hand to use our fork and knife at the same time when the table is too low still we find it very difficult so this exactly we can understand and replicate it in laparoscopic surgery to have the best performance we then have what we call as instrument length ratio what is that it's the length of the instrument that has to be inside the abdomen and length of the instrument that has to be out of the abdomen this depends upon the length of the instrument as well we have two three types of instrument lengths available in the market we have 300 millimeters we have 360 millimeters we have 420 millimeters whatever the length it is the intracorporeal length of the instrument has to be equal or a bit more than the extracorporeal length of the instruments if the intracorporeal length is far less we'll have to compensate with a more wider elbow and shoulder movement causing more fatigue and more injury as well if it is much more than one that is if too much of 
uh, intraoperative length is needed that means you have put the port too far away maybe we have a lot of uncontrolled instrument movements causing injury very very commonly this has to be understood much much better putting all those perspective into picture is it easy to replicate then just to follow all these rules no it is difficult we might goof up sometime so i have come out with a practical application using our own hand to do these principles in a better way how we do it for example we have a target for example target of a og junction or hiatus what we do take one hand span approximately from the target down one hand span easily comes up to around 18 to 20 cm in a normal individual so you put the port about some 18 to 20 cm below when you measure it it will come maybe around 4 to 5 cm above the umbilicus to mark four finger breadth perpendicular marking on the right and left of the scope if you have distance the abdomen after putting the telescopic port in then you need to do six finger breadth distance at 90 degree from the telescopic port mark the working port 1 and working port 2 if we combine these lines you form a right angle triangle at the scope as well as a 60 degree manipulation angle at the target where all the elevation angle all the azimuth angle every target plane is easily achieved which gives the best performance putting that into practical perspective how we can do it let us explain in this picture this is a typical bariatric patient put on the table how to put a placement okay our highest portion of function will be at the hiatus so have the target at the hiatus there you take one hand span distance approximate one hand span distance you mark it and place the telescopic port now this optical port is done from the optical port what next you open up your hand and get a right angle done and mark both the sides a right angle triangle then four finger breadth mark the right working port and four finger breadth mark the left working port this gives the scope and the working ports perfectly in place and we replicate the rule of hand what i mentioned it perfectly fits into that this gives all the telescopic planes angles in place for the best performance of course post that you can add ports numbers whatever you want to add mostly we need one retraction port and one lever traction port remember any procedure is achievable by five port technique if you need to add more ports there can be two possibilities one either you have to be going ahead with the complex procedures of two three organs where you need a more port or your ergonomics is wrong so you need more ports to add some tips to this i will say place ports based on position of the targets i as i explained the most important tip telescopic port placement should always be at the central location don't go off axis if we see in the center and our working performance happens on the sides that's the best optimal performance anybody can achieve best angle between the instrument and scope should be maintained wherever not possible make sure the azimuth angle of the dominant hand is maintained that is a 30 degree azimuth angle between the telescope and the dominant hand if it is maintained which is going to be the major operating hand a non dominant hand being 20 or 40 or 50 might be okay to be doing a better performance than 
compromising on the azimuth angle of the dominant hand. What happens if a manipulation angle is smaller? Reduce the elevation angle so that the angle between instruments and telescope widens, making your performance better. It's a small tip that can help you to overcome that. If the elevation angle becomes too high, which is pretty common in nowadays, in lots of learning centers, I see those things. Increase the table height to make the acute angle at elbow to reduce the errors and force. These are small tips which can help you to optimize a wrong port placement and avoid putting extra ports. But of course, when you're having difficulty, don't hesitate to put extra ports. Extra port is not a failure, it's just a learning curve where you can overcome that with some time when you learn the economics properly. Of course, at the end of the day, it's not just about laparoscopy by doing a procedure, completing a procedure with so many ports, like 8 ports, 10 ports. It's about optimally performing with 3 to 5 ports when we follow the principles. Thank you.